Hello, welcome back to my channel, Antoinette here, and I'm going to unbox this lovely black box of magical goodiness from Cheryl at the Oneness Emporium, based in the UK. And for those who don't know of Cheryl, she stocks um, decks that come from the publishers like Llewellyn, uh, Hay House, I think she said she does Los Scarabeo, and a bunch of other creators and people that um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically what happens is because she's direct from them we can get them a little bit earlier so I think I think what's in this box I have hopefully got before other people get them from that big named branded shop that we all use online um, and end up on a waiting list for and they don't guarantee to come in on time for what we want them for so there's some hints about the time of year I want this. So you might have guessed what's in here, but let's go ahead and um, take a look. So she always wraps things beautifully. So we've got um, gold and black paper. Oh, oh, she's sent me a gift. Let's have a look. I can see those. They're quite sizable tumbled stones. For me to play with. Um, soda light, I'm going to guess. With the white splotches. I think if it was a dark blue, I'd say lapis, but because of the white mottling, I'm going with soda light. But um, Cheryl, if you see this, let me know. Um. Straight off, this reminds me of a garden quartz, but I'm getting purple hints in there. So I think it's sort of layered, but I'm thinking more perhaps um, amethyst, because there's definitely purple in there. I feel like maybe an amethyst, rough amethyst, dog tooth amethyst. But again, I could be very wrong, but you can see into it. So you, you could use this to um, scry or meditate, just looking into... The stone I have um like a shaman stone upstairs as they call it or garden stone desert stone where you can look in and see what's going on inside they're really nice for when you just need to focus somewhere else focus your attention somewhere else that's coming in a lovely velvet pouch thank you very much that was really kind of you I appreciate that and we have an envelope thought it had a dog hair on it already then so we have a little sticky there saying thank you for supporting the small business. And this is, so these are cards that she pops in to entice us to buy more decks from her. So just some of the ones that she has around. And she did say recently, she did a live on um, Simon's channel at the Hermit's Cave. If you don't see what you want, if you message her because she's in direct contact, a uh, stockist, seller, distributor from particular branded companies she can probably get it for you so everything happens for a reason and through the reason is sometimes unclear i graciously accept all that transpires in the knowing that it unfolds through love in accordance with the divine will of my soul isn't that a beautiful piece of art i'm too busy trying to pull it over here so i can look at it forgetting that i'm supposed to be showing you um well i Anyone not guess that one? <laughs> the Lightseers, by chance? There it is. Seven of Pentacles. Helping things grow. Oh, that's... um. I'm so glad you didn't give me the tarantula. Um, <laughs> the Giraffe Spirit. See the big picture. So that is one of the Hay House mini decks that are now out. I think this one comes in a tin, actually. Um, and just for the reasons mentioned before... I won't purchase that deck, but um, it is a gorgeous deck. I see so many people really enjoy using it. Mm, I'm not sure. Oh, um, Fifth Spirit Tarot. Is it this one? I think. With the elements. I've seen a lot of people with this one really enjoying it. Uh, the waterfall and I can't name it I've seen this deck around as well but I cannot name that one at all 
another lovely Oracle deck. Um, it's a nice matte cardstock, that one. Ooh, don't know. Yes, I do. Can't name it. I've seen it. I love the um, holographics on these, um, which many of you will be aware. That's why I'm collecting the Total Tower subscription box so I can get the giant size deck of the Golden Art Nouveau. Um, although it's not holographic, it's gold and shiny. Yes, I know this one. I have the indie version. Um, and for those who aren't aware, The Unfolding Path by Athena Karna, um, this deck has been produced almost identical to the indie deck. The corners are rounder. Um, there are a few minor differences. And in fact, this one comes with a guidebook. <laughs> so if you were really um, upset that you missed out on this one, go get it. Definitely go get it. And then we have the Wonders Emporium um, little note for me for saying thank you for shopping and being able to come back another time using their special code to get discount on my order. So there we have it. And there's the deck. Did you see it beyond all of that? So let's pull them out, get rid of this one. Okay, so it is Tarot of the Vampires. By This one's by Charles Harrington um, and illustrated by Craig Mayer. This is not to be confused with this one. This one's Ian Daniels, um, so it's a different deck. Let's get in and see. Oh, this one's exciting. I have only seen so far America do walkthroughs of this and one other person in the UK so far, so... We have Codex of the Vampires. Oh, I like that. Charles Harrington. Um, and I wasn't going to buy it because I thought I had the tarot deck that I needed for vampires. And um, look at this. Beautiful. It is beautiful production quality. Yeah, so I thought I had the deck I needed, but then I started seeing the images in this. I mean, look at that devil. Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I'm going to treat myself. <laughs> I won't buy new socks for work. I'll buy I'll buy a tarot deck. <laughs> Cause you know that's how my brain works around here. This is really good. So obviously I'm going back to front as I do every single time. I think maybe three videos I've managed to go the right way around in a book. So the codex of vampires. So we've got the illustrator and the author and some information about them. Charles Harrington has been reading, teaching and loving tarot for 25 years. He is the author of the guidebooks of the Murder of the Crows tarot. I did not know that. Phrenic printer tarot and tarot V from Los Garabeo. Tarot V, actually, that is on my list. I would quite like to get that deck. His love of the cars and connecting with other readers has manifested in co-host podcasts, speaking conferences and leading meetups at San Francisco Bay Area. The illustrator, Craig, is an illustrator creating fantasy and tarot art. Craig believes figurative illustration of otherworldly subjects is the core of storytelling art. And then it gives us a bit about how he began his art journey. Um, he appeared in The Spectrum, The Best in Contemporary Fantastic Art and Infected by Art Illustration Annual. So there we have the other books. Oh, did he do Journey of a Lonely Soul? I actually have that one out to see if it goes with this deck. All right, so there we go. So we have Come Away With Me Into the Night. So I'm making the assumption these are cards in the deck. The Shadow of the Vampires. So this is um, bringing us into the story of the vampires, which reminds me there is something on Prime I want to watch. I've seen a new remake of Bram Stoker's um, Dracula, so I thought I might watch that today. Okay, Mercifully brief history of the tarot. <laughs> I like that. Um, yes, nice and brief because it gets done and redone, doesn't it? A deck of shadows. Tower of Vampires incorporates the potent symbols of the modern vampire to assist you in your explorations of the mysteries of life and questions about your future. 
It is part of the Rider-Waite Smith School of Tarot, the most common form of tarot deck in the English speaking world. And the meanings for each of the cards will coincide closely with the decks of that kind. So you don't necessarily need the book to be able to read the deck, I think is what we're saying here. The scenes and characters of Tarot of the Vampires cards draw their inspiration from popular modern vampire fiction. But you do not have to be familiar with any particular book or movie to read the deck. That's another thing that I like. I like the images. So sometimes images pull me in because I'm quite visual. Um, but I don't like the literary tarot. But I haven't got a clue what most of those books are. Because let's be honest, I am not a reader. I don't have enough time in my day to do that. But I do listen to audiobooks. But I don't remember what's in the audiobooks. I'm terrible. Um, so sinking your teeth into a reading. Oh, I like that one. I think that is a card, isn't it? I think I've flipped through in the book. Practice reading, word of caution, reading reversals in here, your journey, symbols and potent. And we've got a ritual to bless your deck, should you want to do so. Um, for those who are starting out, and this might be one of your first decks, you don't have to do that. It just depends what suits you. So um, as lots of people in the tarot community say, do what resonates and leave the rest. So tarot spreads, a daily draw, the crossroads spread. So that's if you want to make a choice about something. Between heaven and hell. Oh, I like the wording. I'm feeling, oh, I'm feeling the autumn vibes doing this. The a grimoire of meanings. Welcome at last to the heart of this codex, a guide to the individual meaning of each tarot card. Okay. This section will tell you about the unique energy of each. Oh, right, okay, so that's just telling us where we're going now. And then we move into the major arcana. Uh, oh, there we are. There is the fool. How did I guess that? I did not get the fool when I looked at that card to start with. I can see it now. I also get, you know, like a page or knight of cups or wands feel for that one too. Okay, so then we go through. and Obviously, we have the um, majors, minors all the way to the back, King of Pentacles, The Night is Young. So there is, it looks like there's a little story in this book for people that want to read. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is crazy art. That's something I would want on my wall for Halloween. Oh, I love that image. And um, I do know that these are the backs of the cards, so uh, we finished with the backs of the cards, so that's quite nice. Oh, so far, so good. Um, so what I didn't say was this is a Llewellyn production, uh, just straight into the cards and carried away. Obviously, it's in the standard box. We have the ribbon to get our cards out. Here's our deck. <clears throat> As we said, the backs. And we know that's our fool. So let's bring you down and have a look at these. I'll try not to draw for too long on each, each one. Let me just get you into proper shot. Gosh, we're at 13 minutes already. You lot must be wondering what on earth I'm doing. Now I do have a lot of decks to try and run with this as well, so. If I have the full of attempt not to spend too long, but you know, I think you, well, if you know me, you've been around my channel for a while, you can probably see why this deck was like, hi, it's colourful, it's vibrant, it's slightly different in its imagery. And that was one of the things that I liked about it, how it's depicting itself. Because I mean, look at our Empress. So we have a tree, we have nature around her, we have wisdom, the kind of moody, stormy skies connection to earth and we have our emperor completely juxtaposed in his finery with his um you know in his finery did i say that yeah with his fiery items around him <laughs> and it's gold here's our hierophant that's a nice one nice different take the lovers She's bleeding. Ah, oh, thank, thank goodness. Chariot, oh, I love it. Yes, so Carnival Float-esque. Like Mardi Gras, isn't it? 
We've got, oh, I see it. I probably see it now. So we have our two guys. You all probably saw that when I showed you, but I didn't. <laughs> and so we have our two um, directions with our, you know, opposite colours here. And she's um, very definitely willing the item forwards. Strength. I've been watching Bitten again, like re-watching it on Amazon, Pluto. Um, reminds me of that. Quite like it. The Hermit. It's <laughs> hiding behind his dragon. Or Gargo. It's a wheel. That's a nice different take as well, isn't it? Just a rabbit, a, a hare and a wolf. Um, night animals. So justice. So I get the sense from this, even when you're blindfolded, you know what's right and wrong, you know, you <laughs> you you will still exact what it is that's needed. Hanged man. Is our death card. So he's about to bring her back to life, it looks like. Temperance. Oh, I love all the potions bottles. And mixing it all into the urn. I wonder what she's up to. All right, so there's our um, wicked devil card feeding his lesion. A tower. Star. The moon, Lady of the Lake. But you see her reflection isn't what you see above. So it's not always, I like that, that illusion, um, illumination, not always seeing the whole picture, not seeing, or only seeing what you want to see, not seeing what's behind. The sun. I wonder how he fell out the window because obviously he's trying to save him but he's about to catch flames so yeah his judgment so this almost looks like our devil in it, from the devil card so is she one of the people that was drinking his blood under his illusions and the world. And we're back to, she's got the um, I don't know how much that, we've got them in the wrong order. So is that her come full circle with her lily and her rose? And maybe a change of outfit? Right. Into the wands. Visually, like I just love that. That is, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this again if you haven't guessed uh, for myself and spend some time looking at these cards. Four of Wands. That was nice. No, like even down to this, you know, putting the circulatory system with the heart um, and showing it because that gives you that. You know, when you watch vampire movies, films and things, you see them look at somebody and it's almost like they have X-ray vision and can see the circulatory system pumping. It's a nice touch to the cards. Here's our five. So practicing to overcome barriers, I guess, obstacles. Six. Seven. Nice take for the eight of wands. So I'm guessing that he's turning into the bats. So it looks like he's doing the, um, oh, I can't think of the word, but you know, transmutation where they turn into the little uh, flock of bats. I don't even know if it's called a flock, but the flock of bats and then they fly off into the night. Ten. 
Okay, so that's our two, isn't it? Out on the ten of the wings. And here's our page. So the neon in this is giving it like some movement. I can definitely see movement with the what's going on. Knight of Wands. We have a rock star for the Knight of Wands. I always kind of used to think of that as the King of Wands, but um, we'll see how that one lands. We'll see what the King's up to. Our Queen and our King. Okay, I see. <laughs> so he's he's leading rather than fronting. And then we have the cups. So a two, a three, four. So instead of having the cup handed to him, he's um, helping himself. Five. Hmm. Well, you see they've like thrown the chalices over. Oh, cute. Six. Seven. I like all the faces. Eight. I have a thing for bottles, potion bottles. Did anyone else have a fascination with those when they were a child? My grand used to have um, a couple and maybe that's where it comes from. Um, they're always amazing, these little gold, gold green glass coloured jars that just used to sit on stands. So ornamental, never useful. Here we have our nine. And um, ten. So looking at what they're drinking, I'm guessing... This is kind of like a joining of um, two different people because she looks like she's drinking blood. He looks like he's drinking water or normal food. Um, I'm making the assumption now that we're very strict on what they're drinking. Here we have our page. It's like a fish. You see the fish? Well, she's staring into the water. Night. These ones are becoming quite popular now, aren't they, on motorbikes? Uh, although it's usually the Knight of Wands I see on a motorbike. Queen of Cups. So she's um, using her intuition there. <laughs> the King of Cups. He looks very happy with himself. Cheers. Ace of Swords. We have an eye there in the middle of the sword. Two of Swords. So we're not blindfolded. Um, perhaps we're listening to what's going on to see which direction that person in the background is going to approach. Three of swords. Interesting. It's being sucked dry. Four of swords. We have a little bit of um, Snow White story there. Glass coffee. Here's our five. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't want to hurt them. I'm going by the romanticized versions of werewolves. Six of swords. Definitely being guided away. Wouldn't mind a boat like that. Here's our seven. The movement that's kind of created in these um, yeah, I think the artist has done a really good job. Eight of Swords. Who are we looking at? We're looking at him, I'm guessing. And he's reflected in the Hall of Mirrors all around him. So I guess she must be two. So then how do you work out where you are? Um, overthinking things. Or trying to plan a strategy to make sure the next move is the correct move. Here's our nine. <laughs> and there's another deck I have with a card that I actually quite like, which is a bit like this. And I know that people saw it. I can't remember what deck it is. How bad is that? Um, but I quite liked it. And people were like, oh, no, that's a very creepy card. 
this one is going to be in the same veins for a lot of people for that creepy card. Ten of Swords. And then we have a page. Knight. Queen of Swords. And our King of Swords. Hmm. Not going to lie, people, there is something quite alluring about our King of Swords. Right, Ace of Pentacles. So, two. Balancing up the fireplace ornaments, either way. Three. A woman in kind of a position of strength, power. Collaborating with um, people around her. Four. That's a guard dog. Five. Could look at this two ways now, couldn't you? So is this paving the way for help? So paving so they can find you to come and help you? Is this the call for help? Is this, you know, um, is he saying over here? Um, six. I don't know if I get so much nostalgia from this. Uh, yeah. So there is nuances, isn't there, within the deck um, that do and don't match right away. Eight. Seven of Pentacles, but once you know what you're looking at, I mean, all, they're all listed on the bottom. So as I said in the book, the minions are going to be the same. Burning the candle at both ends. There's our nine. She has quite the bust. Ten. There's our page. I'll just pick these last few up. Knight. Queen enjoying her surroundings. And king. Oh, of course he would be. Uh, I'm making the assumption that he's in his blood bank. So, that's the deck. Okay, so let's just bring you out a bit so we can have a look at some decks together. So naturally, I'm going to put the two together, aren't I? The two vampire decks. There is an instant difference in the colouring the backs, this cardstock feels a smidge thicker than this one, so the movement. So it shows you how much movement you've got in your card. It does come back, so they're flexy. It's just to me, these are kind of what I would call just standard Llewellyn cardstock. Um, I don't really get too much into it. But I just thought, let's have a look. They're not in order. I've shuffled this, and this one's out of order anyway, but just as a comparison for, you know, how they look together. And I love the fact that Seven Pentacles is on the top when we get going. They might actually accompany each other quite well. Four of knives with the hierophants. Two of skulls with our hermit. If you're looking at it visually, like you would definitely build up a visual story, couldn't you? So she could actually be pining about this person and he could be writing a love letter to this person. Like, yeah, two ways of doing this now, isn't there? 
storytelling with the cards and um okay so this deck the people are named slightly differently so i did have to do this um so we have the prince of grails princes are knights and then we have the page of pentacles so knight of cups page of pentacles four of skulls with strength yeah i think you know this is like the dark side and this is the light side <laughs> of vampirism so i like that Right, where should we go next? I have another tarot deck that I thought I'd quite like to pop next to this, which is the um, Silver Witchcraft Tarot by Los Garabeo. This is one that came in my Total Tarot collection again, um, but I just thought with the black borders and the colourful imagery in the middle that these might go quite well. And um, the deck is smaller than, just slightly like, taller and thinner than a Llewellyn. So we have Six of Chalices. Judgment with the Ace of Swords. Four of Wands, Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, I can see these are not bad actually. Are they Five of Swords with Six of Wands. Mm. Yep, so calling in help because you're about to be mobbed. <laughs> With our Page of Wands, with our King of Cups. Imagine the mischief they would put together. Eight of Swords, Two of Swords. Which ways of overthinking for your next move? Yep, I think that that's giving a pretty good um, combination as well. I'm not disliking that. Uh, my visual first impressions are with the pops of all the neon and brights want to play with something less neon and bright next to it but you know me I do like to have colour everywhere now then so I was curious because the deck that I pulled out to put alongside this was um Journey of the Lonely Soul I had no idea it was you know written the guidebook was written by the same person that's helped to do this so which way around should we do these So let's take a look. Nine of Swords with Inward Initiation and the Page of Wands. I think that's a pretty good message. Our Chariot, Cradled by the Sky and Ten of Pentacles. The Lovers, Diving Towards Heaven and Ten of Wands. That's quite a neat, um, actually that's quite neat. So this deck I, you know, I kind of use it on its own usually or as a last card, um, but I have to feel that I need this deck because this one is more like poking yourself, looking introvertedly at yourself. And I normally use this with other oracles, but actually this tarot deck goes quite nicely with this. Um, I'm quite liking these messages and the artwork together. So Eight of Swords, not like a fairy tale with our Nine of Wands. Absolutely. Life is not always a fairy tale. So that's the Journey of a Lonely Soul from Low Scarabay, of course. What should we flip through? Oh, there was another tarot deck on me. I forgot. Um, the Fantastical Creatures. I don't know. We'll just see. I'll drop it in the middle. We'll see. Did I shave? I didn't shuffle it. <laughs> I haven't messed it up yet because I haven't been through the deck again. Okay. So obviously this was going to be in order, but just visually, concept wise, they might go. Um, I think it, I'd need to shuffle to see if the messages are coherent with each other. But it's definitely on the lighter side of these, these ones, so I won't waste too much more time with that one. 
So that is a US Games deck. Couldn't do it without this one. So the Abandoned Oracle by um, Patrick Valencia, available at deviantmoon.com, which is his personal website. So yeah, I think these are gonna go. Because they're in the right artscape style, aren't they? Although these are more um, aged, toned down. I'll be honest, Lonely Souls so far has won it for me. Maybe the Tower of the Vampires, Vampires. I won't spend too much more time on these because I've got lots to show just to give you all an idea. Okay, we have another one. I'm not going to stop there with the Deviant Moon. So here we have another one from um, Patrick Valencia, deviantmoon.com. So this is the Zama Twins Oracle Edition 1, first edition. Second edition is now available to purchase and it comes with a guidebook, second edition. These are the gorgeous backs. So from a backing perspective, I thought they'd probably look quite nice. Again, we're into slightly um, cream borders, but three of pentacles with Mercurius and five of swords. You, I think you do need, unless you understand all of these um, people or you're reading these ones, you would need the guidebook for this. So I definitely like to have a guidebook as a prompt, which I have on my phone, um, so I don't have it out. Um, this is the Z card that comes with the first edition deck only, is my understanding. So I have the Z card, Six of Swords, Third and the Eight of Pentacles. Five of Cups, Mandrake, Four of Swords. Oh, that's not bad, actually. You can kind of see it there, can't you? Don't pull the Mandrake out of the ground. Our five of wands with the old devil and the hanged man. Yeah, I think that one I might well play with a bit more and see what we get. Right, next up, um, comes in a green bag. I don't have the box and book out, but this is the W-I-T-C-H, the woman in total control of herself deck. It's nice and dark in our uh, imagery. So hopefully you can see what's going on and the camera picks it up for you. So let's just get some off the top. So what have we got here? Five of Wands with the Priestess of Original Innocence and our Hanged Man. Knight of Cups, Lady of Perpetual Rebirth and Four of Wands. King of Swords with the Predator and Justice. Ooh, that's quite a dark message there, isn't it? Although she's definitely exacting justice on her predator. So that could, you could almost read that like in a form of mind control, couldn't you? Somebody mentally manipulating you on purpose um, until you wake up. The devil with the phoenix and the high priestess. I like that. Lots of fire going on. Page of Cups with our Labyrinth Walker and our Queen of Cups. Again, you know, there's no denying those messages are intuitively... Um, I, I, I can't explain them right so they, they speak to me mentally like I can see it in my mind but I can't put it into words so I can see that one so I quite like that pairing and the messages that are coming out with it um, and then we have I told you I had lots the Oracle of the Rose because many of you know this is one of my favourites at the moment again it's kind of whimsy dark in style so I thought perfect for this one so if we use Page of Cups with Listen and the Queen of Cups. Ten of Cups, B and the Fool. So we've got like, you know, the heart centre there. And the Bs are very um, community orientated. So we've got like couples. So it does feel like the B with the heart and everything is linking all those into me as a visual concept. Ace of Cups, Intuition, Nine of Cups. Oh, that's very interesting. And we also, again, so we have the, I know most of this deck is this, but we have the like kind of darkness swirling around from the background. We have the aspects of the sort of pinky purples. Um, 
yeah I don't dislike this collection either but I knew this one was going to go this one's kind of I know is going to go with most things I own now so we have our queen of swords with remember and queen of pentacles lots of people say the queen of swords never forgets and of course we have I love that so we also have the elephant um that's beautiful with the anyway it's not about that deck is it as I'm going on so we have temperance with the lighthouse and the king of wands so four more to go if you are sticking with have you got a favorite what is your thoughts um I mean there were others that I could have pulled out from an oracle perspective I could have brought out any of my seasons of the witch decks for this um I'm probably guaranteed that they would all look good but I chose to try to pull something not so usually me um, I don't know if I've succeeded or not but uh, I just thought it'd be fun to pull out something a bit different, a little bit for other people, because not everyone has all the decks that I own, of course, and I don't own all the decks everyone else owns. So, but you might be able to see something that you own that looks like these and help you make up your mind. This one I've been using, so this is the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco, which I have for a couple of years. Um, I've been using this one just to follow the phases of the moon on my monthly wrap ups. So, um, that is the words, the keywords that are written on my daily tarot journal. So this one's in order, so I'm not going to change the order, but just for a visual concept here. So we've got the Temperance with the Void, King of Wands. Knight of Swords, Realisation, and the Sun. Yeah. I can see that these might well go nicely. Death. Nourishment, Three of Cups. Yeah, I think that they will work. Five of Pentacles with some discernment and the Two of Pentacles. I think that that's going to go quite nicely. Right, what else have I got? Okay, I'm going to try a random. This one is a wild card. Here's the backs. Here's the deck. Oracle of the Wilder Ones by Sharon McLeod, available on um, Blue Angel Publishing. And here's the cards. So there's a lot of white space. So I already kind of gathered that this might not work. These have got all the information on the cards. There is no guidebook. So um, if you like what you see on the card, then that's your message. So we have our Page of Swords with Nature's Healing Elixir and our Two of Cups. I mean, there's nothing more natural than having a relationship with somebody, providing it's, you know, not hurting anyone else. Um, for me personally, monogamous, but, you know, there's people out there that do other things. Judgment. Deep love-soul connection with our two swords. Hmm. I'm not sure that this is the one, actually. So Ace of Wands, Reflection and Inner Work first. Kind of, yeah, with her broom. So yeah, that could go with the Ace of Wands. And then we have the King of Cups, um, again, with his beverage. Okay, let's see what's, what else we got. Be remiss of me not to drop this one in. Nice and colourful. So this is the Earthly Souls and Spirits Moon Oracle by Terry Foss. This is the one that is now mass market published by, is this one US Games? Yes, US Games. Comes with a guidebook. So let's have a look. Get some down from here. Ace of Wands, Create, King of Cups. Ace of Pentacles with Serenity and the Tower. It's like the calm, the, you know, the thought with the calm before the storm where everything kind of like blows up in your face. Taking that moment to consider. Queen of Swords, magical. Six of Wands. That could almost be, I know it's an owl, but you could almost take that as the um, flight of a bird that's on her shoulder. And then we have the colour concept. So we have the blues hiding in here. Then we have the pinks which come over to here. So there is a transition of colours um, as we go through. Ten of Cups, Wisdom, and the Ace of Swords. 
no, I think they're going to work. I mean, I, as you know, I don't read like this, but for this and this, that to me works very well. Page of Cups, beautiful, and the Knight of Wands. Yes. Okay, the last one. Right, the last one has to be related, doesn't it? So we're going with Les Vampires by um, Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Beckett Griffiths artwork. With the backs. I never got around to trimming this. I was going to take the borders off just to make it slightly easier to handle. And I haven't got around to that, but let's take a look because how could I not put a vampire oracle with a vampire deck, right? So straight off the bat, then we have Page of Cups with Anti-Hero. Maverick, Risk Taker, Rule Breaker, and our Knight of Wands. I think they do go. As a first reading. The Devil with Reason and Strength. And keywords, listen to advice, think clearly, intellect, and move into strength. So that is a nice reading, I think. King of Swords transmission and page of pentacles so spreading of conditions influence impact and he's got like kind of all of his papers laid out there so there's some kind of impact happening with our page of pentacles um and the knight of swords so yeah um knight of cups with her last day in the light and the hermit takes him back to my storytelling card where he could have been writing to that girl um, and she's considering her last day in the light, literally, um, to join him. Five of Cups with Compassion and Two of Wands. Yeah, I like this one. Um, the Lonely Souls. And I can't remember what else I said. Obviously, it's a couple of the other more recent ones, but the Lonely Souls really did... Um, come to life with this deck for me so so the vampire deck brought the lonely souls to life so should we leave you with the three of pentacles and ability and the seven of pentacles what were your favorites what are you pairing with i know i've already asked but please do pop into comments down below because you know it might give me a jump off um and if you are working with the seasons of the witch decks obviously the sawain the maybon or the beltane let me know how you're getting on with those because i think those are gonna be perfect i did consider putting in um oh um nicoletta Ciccoli. i was considering the Ciccoli decks or the um mystical moments oracle deck and tara of course because they're beautiful cards um i also wondered about bringing in the pip decks from tarot aspect so like a nice dark black and gold pip deck to go with this one um, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. And if you're in the UK and you haven't been across to Wanda Emporium, do do go over, have a look. She's got um, sections in there. So it's not just tarot decks. She has new releases or, you know, upcoming releases and pre-orders. So naturally, this has been a pre-order. I have another deck on order with her. How bad is that? I can't even remember what it is. <laughs> um, she has teas, candles, crystals. So lots of um things to quench your thirst and your appetite if you're after the decks especially if you don't want to wait on amazon oops did i say that name out loud um and you know potentially be let down by something not arriving in the given delivery time frame so um there we go so let me know what you think in comments take care bye, -bye.